evening and welcome to the Capital Market. I'm Edi Diongi Wang. It's no news that the derivatives market in Nigeria is not sophisticated enough for more complex assets. Now to set the ball rolling for a thriving market in Nigeria, the Securities and Exchange Commission has presented a 12-page document on the rules for derivatives trading. And that's where we begin the show today. The acting head, Registration Exchanges, Market Infrastructure and Innovation at the SEC, Mr. Timi Agama, explained that the rules include living up to the disclosure requirement set by the Commission. Mr. Agama made this known while presenting the rules at a training for brokers at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We test scenarios while creating these rules. And once that is done and we are satisfied with what we know we have, we share it with the public. We share with the public uh, to elicit comments from people who are either for us or against us. And once these comments come true, we review them again and ask ourselves, are they justifiable? Is, are the comments with good intents? Or do they intend to throw us under the box? So don't be surprised. You may have sent us some comments and we say no. We won't accept it. You will have sent some and we agree because probably we didn't think through it. To that point and so after doing that we will now issue the rules of course they will go to the board of the SEC and you have a ministerial confirmation so I've talked about participants the participants must be strong they must know exactly what they intend to do they must have a vision of how they want to drive the market there must be people that want to go the long hog because you have fair weather participants they've heard that okay there is derivative in Nigerian capital market everybody wants to be part of it they want to be seen as a derivative trader a clearing member so that they can add one more accolade to their name not knowing exactly what they ought to do and they get their hands burnt at the end of the day they become a problem to not only the institution, but even to the system. So all of that has to be taken care of. Who are these kind of persons? Hence, we need to be sure that the participants are people we can vouch for. We can bring, we can hold out, of course, with regards to the fit and proper persons test at the SEC. So beyond that is the issue of surveillance. Surveillance is very, very crucial and important in terms of seeing what is it that people are doing. What kind of trade is happening? Is anybody shortcutting anybody? Is there an intention to defraud? Or is there a mistake which is natural? Are there things we need to stop along the, along the way as it is happening? Because you can actually halt a trade when you know that there's going to be trouble for the counterparty. But that cannot be done without a proper surveillance system. That is why the residence of derivative trading is at the exchange. And we expect that an exchange that will trade derivative will have very strong surveillance system. We are happy to note that the NSC has a strong surveillance system. And we believe they will activate that. Because the NSC operates on the NASDAQ OLX, which I'm aware. I know how strong it is. They will activate those parts that will require the NSC to get hold of anybody who intends to defraud the system. And of course, the SEC will spend nothing, practically nothing, to get that person to jail, not just out of the market. So it's important that we know that as we are moving to this area, this sophisticated area, our activity and our actions regarding enforcement will be stiffer. So if you are not supposed to be part of it, don't just come. 
Because we expect that you will live above board. We expect that you will do things that, are, that ought to be done. We expect that you will not compromise the system. We expect that you will lead the way. We expect that you want to create a market that everybody will be envious of. Indeed, in some climes, for you to trade derivatives, you must have a class. You must have a lecture. Jude was with me to Korea, and we were in, you know, uh, the Korea's uh, SEC, and of course we visited some brokers too, who said, for you to trade derivatives, to be sure you understand what you are trading, they will first take you through a lecture. You will go through the lecture and take an exam to, you know, understand or appreciate your understanding of what you have learned. Then you will click to say, yes, I have understood all that has been said. And I will live by the regulations that are being issued before you are allowed to trade. So at that instance, if you are caught wanting, if you are found wanting in any area, when the hammer falls on you, nobody will come and beg for you. Meantime, the derivatives product manager at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Lukman Adekola, outlines the NSE's journey into derivatives trading. Mr. Adekola was also speaking at the training for brokers at the NSE on understanding the regulatory landscape for derivatives trading. A feasibility study was carried out in, um, between 2013 and 2014 by the exchange. And um, the project kicked off in 2015. And not to say this was done in isolation, the SEC also, they were doing their part in terms of the whole feasibility, their own feasibility study and the kickoff of the project on their side. And the next phase was to basically start looking at enhancing the existing legal, operational, and technological framework of the exchange. So on this slide is basically what we are trying to tell you is basically our journey so far, how far the exchange has gone, what we have done, what we have been able to achieve, what we are what we have, um, what we will continue to do till we get to a certain level of um, comfortability until the key players in the market are satisfied or can easily say we now understand that we're able to basically bring everybody on board to that level where we can bring everyone on board to that satisfactory level of the uh, of, um, participating in this um, derivatives market. So, if, so what we have here is basically we have the ones highlighted in green showing what has been achieved and if you look at the legal framework box you will see that we've practically achieved everything and the last part of that was the sec was the sec releasing their own rules on not just derivative trading but on clearing side of things then we move on to the technological aspect and um we have although we have um, one last um, item that is in black that is a future task and um, that is so because of the clearing uh, infrastructure preparation. So, you know, we've been hearing about clearing, clearing, clearing. So basically, there's still a need for that handshake between the trading system and the clearing system. So that, that is where we are on that side of technology. Um, for product development and awareness, uh, we've done, yes, visibility study has been done. Uh, but the critical aspect, the two major aspects for us uh, that we don't intend to shut down that even once the product, once we launch, we'll continue to do is um, training and mark, training for market um, for interested participants and also market consultation. And that is key because uh, like uh, the speakers have all mentioned earlier, there's a need for uh, development in terms of capacity building where we'll continue to encourage people to see how we can help develop the market, do this advocate, be the main advocate, uh, play the role of an advocacy uh, person for training and developing people develop to get to the satisfactory level where even, because uh, I, from my engagement so far in the market, I know some people have the expertise to trade derivatives in the firm, but at the end of the day, you still have to get some, you still have to help the board get some uh, form of comfort for them to approve you even doing that trade or carrying out a derivative transaction within the firm. So that is also required. So where we, we are not just going to help the 
uh, the key player, or the, should I say the trader or the member, the person, the representative of a firm, understand that, get to that satisfactory level, but we are also playing that advocacy role of, it, of even helping the organization as a whole understand the role of derivatives and how beneficial it will be for not just the firm, but for the economy as a whole. And the last part is um, the membership. So like um, one of my senior colleagues mentioned earlier, it's, um, we're still, we'll continue to call for expression. So far we've gotten uh, some members have submitted applica application. We, we, are, we are still talking to some other people. Uh, we understand that uh, most uh, interested participants will not want to be the first in the market, but they will want to see what happens. But um, what, we, what I would say to that is to basically say, um, it's a process where you have to start. I will encourage you to start now, even, even if you're looking to see how things play out in the market. But because it's a process and it's not like it has been, it's not, derivatives can, it's very important and it's key and the risk involved also, if not managed well, you can burn your fingers. So because of that whole process, it's, um, it's a step where you can start by taking the first step or even showing your intention or coming, uh, receiving the application form and start putting the application package together, which is what we've, been, we've been encouraging people to start doing. And uh, so the, and the process of uh, membership is not, we're not just, we don't intend to just give you an application form and for you to go away with it and start battling with it. It's gonna be a person like an, an hand holding process where we'll work with you, we'll um, continue to communicate with you, visit you regularly to make sure you are able to tidy the loose ends and wherever you have questions, we're at your door, not just waiting for your call, we're at your door to answer those questions. That's the approach we are, to, uh, we are taking for this. And the other two aspect again, that is the future task. It's uh, basically the training and uh, compliance examination, which um, you already mentioned earlier. So the next place I'll go to is uh, one, of, one of the key important aspect is the derivatives market structure. Like we've all heard earlier on um, the importance of, we cannot downplay the importance of a CCP for an exchange traded derivatives and even for, the, uh, for OTC that want to be standardized and be reported. So, so basically this, what this shows us is basically the market structure, what we are going to be looking at in terms of derivatives trade happening. And if you can see, you can see the CCP at the top of it. And if you look further down below the CCP, you would see the clearing member, and you see the relationship between the clearing member and the exchange, and the, the exchange and the CCP. So before a trade, before it, a trade becomes a trade tradable on the exchange, the CCP would have to agree to clear that transaction. That is key. That's the importance of a CCP for a derivatives transaction. And um, you can also see the trading member. So sometimes a clearing member can decide to be a trading member, which was mentioned earlier on, but you just have to meet the required regulation for you to do that. A trading member would have to be registered with a clearing member. A trading member would have to be registered with a clearing member to complete the full application process of becoming a dealing member of the exchange. Well, speaking of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the local bus is getting set to go public after 60 years of existence as the exchange plans to hold a special extraordinary general meeting for members to vote to demutualize on March the 3rd. The exchange, which has 252 dealing members, as well as 166 listed lenders and 154 bonds, will change its name to Nigerian Exchange Group KLC and then list its shares on its own market. The stock exchange's new ownership will include dealing members, individual investors, and possibly overseas institutional and exchange investors. Plans to change the status of the Nigerian stock exchange into a PLC was first raised in 2001, but was postponed severally until recent years under the Oscar Onyema's administration. The NSC is looking to further provide avenues to diversify its operations and evolve into a more competitive, robust, and liberalized stock market. We'll take a quick break now. When we return, we'll take a listen to what the CEO of FMDQ Securities Exchange has to say about the impact of the CBNs on orthodox policies on the fixed income and foreign exchange market. Stay with us. Mm -hmm. 